It's Martin from the Washboard Resonators and on this week's YouTube video I'm going to do something a bit different because of a phone conversation I had the other day. So I've got five different kind of classic vintage blues guitars here. We're going to compare the sounds and how the different construction methods impart a different kind of sound. So I had a phone conversation with my friend Jeremy this week and he is a hobby player at home. He has one nice Martin acoustic. And he was saying like, oh, you know, I'd love to know about how all the different ones sound. A bit like your video where you compare resonator body types on YouTube. So we're going to talk about the construction differences and why they impart a different sound. I'm going to play some sound clips. And in a funny kind of way, it's going to be a bit like a history of acoustic guitars. So we'll start with my 1899 Washburn parlor guitar. Then we'll look at a 1929 Gibson flattop L1. Then we'll look at this 1934 resonator. And then around the 1930s, Martin invented uh, X-braced larger body acoustic guitars like my Martin. And then through the swing era of the 1930s, people started playing a lot of arch top guitars like my old Gibson here. So let's start at the beginning. Here is an 1899 Washburn that was made in the Lion Healy factory. Washburn was a brand name. And this is a quite a small guitar. It's nearly 12 inches across. It has what's called ladder bracing. So it's a bit like how a classical or flamenco guitar is made. The braces are just straight across the body. And this has beautiful Brazilian rosewood back and sides, spruce top. It's copies of an old Martin of the era. And these kind of guitars produce a very dry, clear sound, which is very focused towards the fundamental of the note. If you don't understand about this, when you strum or play a note, it's made out of not just the note, but sub and higher harmonics that all combine to produce the sound. It's actually very rich and complex. A ladder brace guitar focuses the sound to be more of the fundamental. So anybody playing guitar in 1880 or 1910, they would have had one of these. They would have had at the time what's called gut strings, strings made out of cat guts. This has some uh, very thin steel strings. And they were designed to be very nice and soft sounding. Very nice and kind of beautiful sounding. But then if you listen to things like Blind Blake and that kind of music, um, you'll see in the pictures that he has basically something like this. And when you think about Blind Blake and ragtime music, very much one of these. So these work really well for finger picking and kind of faster kind of finger style. If you strum these kind of guitars, um, they kind of choke. Um, they were designed for people to pluck fairly gently. Uh, if you strum them, they kind of choke and they don't put out very well, very well. They kind of compress a lot. So moving through the history, I have a 29 Gibson L1 here, just like Robert Johnson played. These came out in about 1926. This is an A-braced, a very rare kind of guitar. But you're starting to get towards a kind of guitar that sounds more like a modern flat top, like you might think of a Takamini, or a Martin, or a Gibson, or a Taylor. So the A-brace system means that the braces come now in like an A pattern. And it's designed for steel strings. And it's designed to be kind of perhaps strummed and push out the sound a little bit. So you can strum these. There's quite a lot of power there. Um, I don't think Robert Johnson recorded with one of these, but he owned one. But it has that kind of beautiful sound. So in 1926-27, National invented resonator guitars. I've got a video about the history of nationals and um, how to choose a, a, a resonator guitar. This is a 1934 example. The idea is you have a speaker cone, which is a bit like an old Victrola, 
kind of idea, but put into a guitar body. It basically is a vibrating speaker built into the guitar body, a mechanical speaker. Brash, mid-focused. Um, invented originally to be played on your lap to play Hawaiian music, and then in um, jazz bands. Um, and then obviously taken up by a lot of the kind of blues guys. So the next kind of design is basically what we think about now as an acoustic guitar. So this is a Martin, which was probably invented around 33. This is, um, uh, I think, about 12 or 13 years old. So it's relatively new. It's one of my few guitars that isn't a vintage one. But it's a really nice guitar. Um, basically, this is an X-braced guitar. And... Most modern guitars, you, you know, your Taylors, your Gibsons, they're all X-braced. This is designed again for steel strings. And there's a brace that goes like that and a brace that goes like that. You can see it through the sound hole. What an X-braced guitar is designed to do is to strum well, finger pick, but it's designed to produce more of the sub and, and, and upper harmonics and give a much more richer sonorous sound. So firstly, let's hear it strummed. <laughs> hear that the Martin can take that, doesn't compress too much, it projects. Um, a bigger body size Martin or Gibson or whatever, a Dreadnought, they're thicker and bigger. They respond better to being strummed, but these kind of medium orchestra sized bodies, they still strum pretty nice. I love them for finger picking. <laughs> Lastly, here's my 1937 Gibson L50. So this is what's called an arch top, and it's called an arch top because the, the top is carved out of a solid piece of wood, uh, a solid plank that gets carved into this shape. And it's based on kind of violin kind of building. What the arch top was designed for, a bit like the resonator, they tried to make an instrument that produced a sound that would cut. So when you think of 20s and 30s, jazz bands and stuff they're trying to get the guitar to punch because the guitar used to be used uh, truly as a rhythm instrument that was meant to sit with the drums and produce a kind of percuss almost percussive sound so first of all let's play some kind of music like these were invented for <laughs> It's designed to punch and be clear. Again, these produce very much the fundamental, the, the, the pure centre of the note, and less of the upper harmonics and subharmonics. That a bit like a violin, it's meant to put as much of the energy into the main part of the note as possible and, and not dissipate through the instrument. Now, over the years, I've had a few of my guitar player friends pick this up and say, oh, I'd love to have a go on that, and then they finger pick it. kind of um, uh, underwhelmed. These were never designed to be tickled. They're designed to be <laughs> struck to get the best out of them. That's not to say you can't finger pick an, uh, an arch top. Loads of people do. Loads of people are amazing at it. But you know, it's if you're aware of that, you'll understand why it, it's so quiet and projects so little when played quietly. So in the history of guitars, it's about 1937 when this was made that the companies started putting pickups in en masse and basically modifying acoustic guitars with pickups to be electric. And electric guitars started taking off and then it was, as we know with Fender and Gibson, not really until the, the very early 1950s people invented solid guitars to get more volume. So that kind of brings us to the end of this very brief history of those 20s, 30s and 1940s kind of blues styles. So thank you to Jeremy for suggesting this idea. Um, what I will do is just play all these and then I'll cut the video together so you, you hear them change instantly. Hopefully that's of interest. Um, I met Jeremy um, 
he was watching a load of our videos and he emailed asking some advice and we got to chatting and uh, you know i hope this helps you and everything um but you know he's he's become a friend and if you want to become a friend of the band by all means do that um subscribe press the bell icon uh, like comment tell us what you think tell us what you'd like to see find us on facebook instagram spotify all that we'd love to see you there so uh, yeah let's play some music mm -hmm. 